Good morning. This is Gaming Perspectives with Saul and Jolene. And today we're talking about sanity in role playing games. Yes. Okay. Sanity systems. Go. Uh, things that measure your sanity in a role playing game. Not the sanity of the players, because we all know we're crazy. <laughs> we're talking about the characters themselves. <laughs> Oh, that All was right. a good one. I see. Uh, the characters themselves, how a measure of their uh, their mental capacity, I don't know what the clinical name would be. Sanity. Whether they're crazy, I, I'm sure that's uh, not acceptable anymore. But in uh, role-playing games, this w- uh, this kind of, well, for me at the time was kind of new. I played D&D for quite a few years, and then, Call of Cthulhu came out. It wasn't my type of game when I was younger. Don't get don't get in trouble again with that crap that you're saying. I know there's a lot of people out there who love Call of Cthulhu, and for whatever reason, I don't know what it was. Uh, I think I think I explained it before. The first uh, COC players I saw were dressed up in in some sort of uh, old type fashion old attire, which now you would think is cool. Which now I think is cool, but at the time I thought it was like that's what role playing wasn't it wasn't cosplayers it wasn't larping though even though i don't think larping was a, a term that i used back then anyway sorry i thought you guys were a little bit off but but anyway i now happily dress up and for halloween and stuff like that as a as an adult and have a lot of fun dressing up and i think it's cool so that's where i've had some growth in that area but we're talking about sanity and role playing games and the first game that I ever saw or even dealt with that was in COC, which published in 1981, which is a long time ago. Anyway. And it was a big part of it because a big part of Call of Cthulhu is this idea that there's this, this is a, a reality out there that we don't see as, as, as characters. And as we become more knowledgeable about things out there the evil things and nasty things you it's such a shock to your to your psyche that you start losing sanity and so in call of cthulhu there is a sanity stat and what happens is every time you encounter the weird the strange the horrific you might lose you might lose points of your sanity on your stat uh, at certain levels, you start uh, uh, getting some sort of a, a, I don't know if I call it mental illness, but you can start, it starts affecting your character on how they think and stuff like that. And to the point where, to a point where you basically have lost it, your character has lost it and is no longer playable. Now, COC is, it was famous for, for being a very uh, deadly game. So, most of the characters either died or went to insane asylum <laughs> because they're dealing with stuff that is cosmic horror, right? This really weird. Well, it is a horror game, and right. I, I think a lot of it depends on how often the the GM actually makes you roll for sanity, a, right. ch- a sanity check, or right. whatever you want to call it. Right. Because when I was looking at it, one guy says some GMs do it all the time, yes, and some GMs don't do it. They do it like once a game. So it depends on who it is running the game that's going to use Definitely. This, this mechanic yes. part. Totally agree. And I think some GMs like the idea of characters quickly descending into madness and seeing them role play that out. Like other GMs, and they're like, that's not it. I want to get through the adventure. I think you as players can retain most of your sanity and come out of the adventure on the other side. A little, a little bit. It would be like to me when you were talking about it, I was thinking (laughs) there are other games like uh, dark conspiracy, dark conspiracy and um, supernatural. The idea that you're monster hunters, which is basically what you are in in call of Cthulhu in a way, in a way. Yes. uh... But the monster is just really, really bad. (laughs) Um, But the same thing in um, dark conspiracy you're, I don't think there's a sanity check no, in there. There's no. no, because you see those monsters and you just have awakened to the what what is really out there, right? Your response to it is to kill it versus in Call of Cthulhu, your response to it is to go a little bit insane. 
Well, your response is to investigate even more, right? Right. Usually. So there's a difference in Call of Cthulhu and those two other games, which yeah. is uh, uh, Supernatural, even Liminal, and even uh, uh, Dark Conspiracy. In those three games that you mentioned, you can actually blast the creature, the, the mean stuff, whatever, yeah. to bits. Yes. That is totally plausible. In, in Call of Cthulhu, it's hard to kill mist, green mist coming right. at you. Well, how do you shoot at it? <laughs> and And some... GMs take that to heart and say, well, you really can't kill a Cthulhu monster. Right. You could only, like, at the most, weaken it to a certain point where it can no longer harm you and maybe banish it to a different, to its original realm or whatever. So you have to have a, a banishing person with you to do that. Yeah, I don't know if that's even possible. But usually you have to have, like, maybe a some sort of spell, right? Right. And so it's just a totally different mindset. Yes. And I think that's why I liked Dark Conspiracy and I when I was younger, and I didn't like CLC, I never really wanted to play CLC, uh, but I liked. I was intrigued by the dark elements of Call of Cthulhu. CLC is Call of Cthulhu. Oh, and Call of Cthulhu has that more where you really are very squishy, right? Yes, yes. It, it gives you the idea that the big bad is way better than than you're going to be able to right. to handle. Right. So you need to figure out what to do in this little area. And figure out how to make that area safe for you and all people and move along. Well, it's like, uh, to use a, a token uh, reference, it's like a normal person going after a Nazgul, right? One, you can't kill them. You can only banish them for a little bit of time. And two, it doesn't care about you, really, right? You're squishy. Like you you're, said. you're way too squishy right. for a Nazgul. And I think... Uh, That's how Call of Cthulhu is, right? Right. You're, your gun is not going to take out a Cthulhu monster. Yeah, in fact, one of our, our GMs that does a lot of uh, Call of Cthulhu games, Shannon, he says, you can take a gun, but I don't see what, what it's going to do. Because it's a mystery game. Right. And the mystery is, is there a spell? Is there something that's going to, a ritual that is going to help you to survive this, right? And using that is, is arcane knowledge or... Which can make you insane. Yes, right. So it's a t totally different game. Like I said, that's why I like the idea of Dark Conspiracy and that you can actually blast the, the evil to bits. Though, in Dark, even in Dark Conspiracy, it's almost a, what is it, a, a losing battle. It is, yeah. Right. So there is no sanity stat in Dark Conspiracy or Liminal or supernatural that's not what the game is about because you're because basically in those kind of games you're a monster hunter monster you hunter. may be trying to solve a mystery but a lot of times the way you solve the mystery is you take out a gun and kill it the end the end of the mystery or, or you burn it and salt it <laughs> and bury it right right exactly and i think when you play call cthulhu they're not even called they're called the characters are called investigators and because that's what you're doing yes. you're investigating these supernatural things that you that are going on right or you're trying to figure out why yes. all these people have all of a sudden just stopped and are staring into space in this small town or any other kind of weirdness that yes. goes on well, how do you lose sanity how do you lose sanity well depending on the gm it could be something as uh, and seeing or encountering the actual entity that you are up against. Now, I could say that most people might bug out when they see something really weird or, or unusual, irrefutable evidence that something exists that shouldn't exist, a ghost, a ghoul, Bigfoot, and that is going to have an effect on your mental capacity to have reason. I'm imagining it changes your world view in an instant. The th things that shouldn't exist, you see it in front of you, or it's affecting you, and it's gonna it's gonna change you. It's gonna it's gonna have a huge impact on your mind. Well, when you play Call of when we play Call of Cthulhu <laughs> with Shannon, yes, uh, it depends on the GM too, right? Saul was slowly going insane. And you could see it because he was checking off his sanity points. And, and, and I was acting strange. <laughs> and he started doing strange things. <laughs> and everybody's going, uh, what are you doing? But he was missing all of his sanity rolls or checks or whatever. Yes. And so he was getting more insane. And Saul was role playing it very yes. well. I thought it did good. Well, Shannon, a lot of times, and I'm, I'm sure other GMs too, think that 
especially if you play a lot of Call of Cthulhu, the only way you're going to make a difference is to make a sacrifice, right? To so somebody in the party is going to have to step up and be the one that is going to stop this thing. And in doing that, they're either going to go completely insane or die, right? Right. That's where when the sanity mechanic or whatever stat comes in, then you kind of, are you going to role play that? Or are you just going to go, okay, well, okay, I figured out what I need to do. So this is the. Yeah, a lot of it depends on, on how you role play, right? I think as a player, you want to, one, have fun, right? right? And two, you want to play your character, and I know this sounds silly, realistically, right, <laughs> to the setting. Now, if the setting is you're a barbarian swashbuckler or whatever you want to call it, then jumping on a on a ship and grabbing a, a rope and swinging and, and killing the pirates as you swing by is plausible. Right. As a history professor from the University of Ohio investigating a strange death, for whatever reason I'm doing that, or my character's doing that, I may not have the same I may not have the same prowess to do what the barbarian does was grab a rope and swing and yeah, no. and swing a sword. So that reality is different than than the other. Well, was, and it also depends, right? Cuz I know when we played with Morgan being the GM yes. for Call of Cthulhu on a train. Yes. That we were playing online. This was this was a while ago during the COVID times. And uh, so we're playing online and I missed in the Zoom that I was possessed that all of a sudden I became possessed. And as soon as I saw it, I go, oh, I'm like, okay, how do you play a possessed person? So I just changed my personality a little bit. And instead of doing what I was doing before, I'm like, okay. And people started to get suspicious of me after a while because I was trying to get release things and and open up things that you're not supposed to. And to for, to uh, to show how deadly it is, or, or and I think it was a Western kind of yeah. thing, right? So it was like 1800s or something like that. And we're on this train, and and I get into a gunfight, and I am a gunfighter. I mean, I'm trained. You were like a sheriff. I was or like something. a sheriff or something. Going to shoot this guy. But he wins the initiative or whatever it's called, and he shoots me in the head. Boom! I'm instantly dead. One shot. Because you're squishy. Because I'm squishy. So that's and why a lot of get shot the, in the head. Most people don't get up. Like yeah. That. And and in Call of Cthulhu, that's why they have extra characters for you to take up. <laughs> because that yeah, you know, I mean that's part of the game, right? So you right. go into it knowing that, then it, it's very helpful. I really enjoyed both games, right? And I I like the idea of exploring this my history professor going crazy. I'm not sure I would want to play that kind of game over and over again. Well, you might, you might, after you played it a while, you, you might figure out how to do it a little bit differently, right? Not, not, Smartly. not go head on against the, oh, this is the, the blah, blah, blah. The evil. Yeah. The, the, yeah. But sometimes it just comes up and. Well, that, that, there's and every game is going to be different. Right. And, and I think in the game where you, you ended up sacrificing yourself. Right, and I think you're right. I think not every game is going to be your character sacrificing themselves to, for the greater good. There's going to be different ways that you're going to attack or, or attack, uh, solve the problem. Right. Other than, like you said, meet the evil head on. You're going to be more smart about it, and and you're going to learn. You you as a player is going to learn how to uh, mitigate the 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 evilness or the strength of this monster or this entity and be able to figure out, well, okay, a shotgun, a machine gun, a pistol is not going to do anything. So what will affect this monster or this, this thing and taking it, take it from that angle. And how can I not lose my sanity while I'm doing it? <laughs> You're going to lose something as you play this game. So I think it's very interesting that people have a very strong opinions on the san- on the idea of a sanity stat. Some people say that they don't like it because it's too much like hit points. And some people don't like hit points either. The idea that there is a measure of how many points your body can take before you die, right? And I think the classic is D&D, right? That's always in the back of people's minds, how you could have a hundred hit points and you're fighting and you take 99 points of damage and you're still fighting at the same level you were when you had a hundred hit points. And I, and I think 
after a few years of playing D and D, people were going, "Well, what are hit points? Is it really body damage?" And I remember reading. Uh, I don't remember where it was. It, it was in a, It was either in a in a later edition of D and D or in a in an article where uh, Gary Gygax himself was trying to explain what hit points were, and then he he kind of was, I think trying to understand what people's uh, situation was as far as what they thought hit points were and how it just couldn't be damaged to the body because it didn't make sense, right? If you have 100 hit points and then you have one hit point, you're still operating at the same level. Some people thought, well, there should be some effect to the person. And so he came up with this idea that uh, hit points was not necessarily body damage, but it was luck it was exhaustion. It was all these things that ramp with this huge, cl- vague idea of what the hit points were. And that as you fought in combat, you lost your edge, you lost your, your luck, you lost all these things. And it's, it's just slowly getting slower. And when they hit you, when they hit you to zero and kill you, that was when you make a fatal mistake and you actually get hit. Well, that kind of makes sense in a way, because, but if you look at other games, not only Call of, so Call of Cthulhu deals with that. You have live live hit points, right? Right, and you have life sanity, sanity, right? Yeah. So, so that does your your physical and mental, and there's right. lots of games that that do that, right? Now, now that mimic that kind of idea. So they didn't like to just the hit points because they couldn't deal with the it's only in one stat versus now there's you you have wounds like in we're playing star wars wounds and strain Strain, yes and strain is the mental capacity aliens it's it's what light hit points or whatever and and stress or i think stress it would be uh uh it's not really a stat it's a it's a level that you're at but it's a mental level right yes i guess it is Cause when you and it is, it's a lot like it's a lot like a sanity mechanic <coughs> for alien because once you hit that a certain level of threshold, yeah, <coughs> of of stress, you're rolling these dice and you don't know what's going to happen. But you might just sit down on the floor or start screaming, right? Depending on how catatonic you are at, at what you saw, right? So it's it's almost exactly like Call of Cthulhu, right? But it's what you're you're seeing this thing that is going to kill you and your your stress level goes way too high, right? What's well, interesting, yeah, I agree. I agree that that it does seem very similar to Call of Cthulhu, but the difference is in Call of Cthulhu the 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 sanity uh stat as it goes down, it's up to the player to determine or to role play uh how that is the how does that affect them, yeah. in the game. Yeah. And and I noticed this a lot in Free League's Alien game, and therefore Free League's Dragon Bane, and other 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 games, they all have like this critical hit thing table, and it basically you just roll on this table, and what happens happens, right? Well, and it gives in that way. Uh, some people might say it takes away the player's agency, yes, but it also gives the player an idea of what's happening, right? Like like all of a sudden, instead of going, oh well, I can just fight through this. If you hit, if you roll a certain die number, and it says, "Oh, you're gonna start," you're really panicking, so you you can't move, right? Right. So then, as the player, you're going, "Oh, I didn't realize it was that bad," and you're like, "I can't move," or you know, whatever it is, right? Or you start screaming, or you start screaming. <laughs> yeah, I did notice that that uh, free league, and with their table, they like tables, and they like stuff that just happens, right? Right. There's no uh, what is it? There's no die roll needed. There's no saving throw. It just happens. Like when I got swallowed by that dragon or thing, <laughs> it just happened. It was. <laughs> I rolled a, a, a was a six sided die yeah. or an yeah. eight sided die, and then my brother goes, "Okay, get swallowed." I'm like, "I don't get a saving throw." I don't get, he goes, nope. "I didn't say you were dead. I just said you got swallowed." <laughs> <laughs> and it was, and it was, there was rules in the in that little section about being swallowed of what happens, how much damage I get per turn, how long I have to live and all this other stuff or whatever. And actually says that I could fight my way out. Right. So it wasn't over. Right. Right. My life wasn't over. But I thought it was interesting how things just happen in in 
in a lot of free league games is uh, just based on a die roll. Boom, this happens. Like you're screaming uncontrollably. And well, like, you know, you that- you, as a player, you don't get a choice. Okay, and I think it. it it does sometimes. Some people are slightly put off by it, but I think in uh, in in the uh, alien game, because people are playing aliens, and most people who play or want to play that game have seen one or two, three, four. Uh, well, it's it's really it is a movies. horror movie, right? There's really, only two movies. The, the rest suck. But uh, I'm including all of them. I don't know about this new one coming out, Romulus. Who knows? Might be good a few days after my birthday. But uh, anyway. But they've seen the movie, so they're like, "I understand what's going on. That I, I understand why this is happening, right? And it, that's the that's the game. That's the that's what they're trying to mimic. Is that it's a horror field. game, right? Yeah. So it's a it's it's just like Call of Cthulhu. It is a horror game, and in horror movies, horror books, yes." Um, <laughs> Sometimes you got to stick those books into the freezer so that they, the characters can't get you. That kind of thing, right? Those You didn't see that episode of Friends? No. Joey tries to read The Shining. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> anyway. I've not seen, obviously, I've not seen every episode of Friends twice. Anyway, so the idea in horror is that to make it suspenseful, right? And we talked about this before when we talked about Alien that that stress or panic mechanic yes. does give you the illusion of of intense fear or yeah. intense suspense of what's going to happen. Right. Definitely a suspense of what's going to happen. I think and that's why I really like Alien and how it works. But still there's there's going to be those players, there's people who say, well, this is uh taking away my player agency. Well, most of the time, tables do that, right? Tables, your horse is going to die. <laughs> I, knew, your... I knew that was coming. <laughs> I'm not a fan of of tables rolling on tables, but I do find it. it you just if if you go with it, and then you can just role play that. I, maybe maybe you shouldn't think of it as taking away your player agency, but just giving you an idea of of which way it's going, right? I just agree. But I understand people saying, well, it's kind of taking my agency by not giving me a choice, right? And and I think a lot of players who play Alien understand or even call Cthulhu understand that the setting that they're playing in is one where stuff happens to your character and there's almost like no choice. This is really terrible stuff happening. Right. And so when your character start screaming or can't move for one round while this big thing is just eating up your friend, you can understand why. And you you already have the buy-in because people are already playing that game based because of the subject matter. Right. So unless you have no idea what Alien is, right, and you're going into the game going, oh, I'm going to be like Star Wars thinking. I don't know why you would. And then you come up with an Alien and it just decimates half your crew. You're like, uh, what's going on here? This is not what I signed up to play, right? This is not the. You, you, know. you didn't watch the movie. Yeah, exactly. So I think that does that may happen. I don't see how it could happen, but it could happen. Uh, but yeah, so unless that happens, I think most people are buying in to the setting, to the world, and to what might happen. Right, so they're not bothered by the lack of agency when a die roll dictates. Okay, you're gonna scream for the next round. Uh, that's what you do. You lose all your other actions. And it's not only Call of Cthulhu and Alien. I mean, the World of Darkness games. They all have this kind of mechanic, sanity mechanic, right? They have like a. In <laughs> well, I think the, the the guy we were listening to somebody in, and uh, he said that there was like. It was basically the same thing, but they call it different different things, things in each depending each on, genre or game. Yeah, because that uh, world of darkness is like vampire, wrath, the oblivion, uh, werewolf, and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, you're playing in the same world. World of darkness, but you're playing different types of characters. Obviously, right. werewolves and vampires, and wrath is like you're playing ghosts or something. Well, and it, and it, one of them one of them has humanity, which I <laughs> which which, in if you think about it, and 
Shadowrun, you have essence, essence. right? Yes, which is and humanity. Which is, which is a humanity stat. So the more you have, what do you call it? The more cyborg stuff you have or the cybernetics. more cybernetics you have, the less human you are. Right. And, and it, it literally takes your essence away from you. <laughs> right. And it also show, tells you that uh, you lose your ability to even do magic. Right. You need the essence. Your essence is equal to your magic yes. score. Yes. Yeah. And if you you start with six, I think. Right? Yeah. As as you lose essence, that's the highest level of magic that you can use, or it deter it de- makes your magic less. It makes it harder for you to do it. Right. For example, I remember in the first edition of, of Shadowrun, there was a burnt out mage. They call him a burnt out mage. So he could still throw spells that he used amulets and stuff like that a lot, because he had cybernetic eyes. And so he had suffered some loss of essence, but he was making up. But it kind of made up for something, right? His loss of essence, he could see in the dark and have all these cybernetic things happen. And at the same time, he still had spells and amulets to boost his magic because he had lost his essence. I thought it was an interesting character. I never played one, but I thought it was interesting. So lots of games have this kind of... uh... Yeah, I, 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 what, what would you call it? It's not. A, it's a. It's a mental. It's a mental stat right. versus a physical, a physical stat. Right, right, and you're right. You know, I didn't. You're right. I was thinking about Star Wars. You're right. Strain, and is totally different. It's, it's the, strain and wounds. It's the stress of 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 of. In fact, Bay that. said, if you get up to your strain level, then you really can't do whatever task you're trying to do. Right. So it kind of mimics the whole idea of conditions in yeah. in the. Uh, in uh tales from the loop tales from the loop like when you have i think three or four conditions you can't you, do anything you basically but go shut home. down right yeah see i can't do anything i can't deal i cannot deal no well more. which is the same as as sanity right you can't deal with it anymore you have to go well, a little bit more permanent it, yeah. yes yeah. <laughs> for me uh, though certain people don't like the idea of losing points for example like i was talking about hit points that idea doesn't make sense to them neither does the sanity stat people uh there's been a lot of rants about that but I, when I was playing, I really liked the idea of that, of that sanity stat telling me, oh, okay, I am, what is it? It was a good gauge for me to help me role play my character. And, and I don't know, I'm not sure that the, another system or another way of il- illustrating that, right? Of showing me or telling me as a player that this is what's happening. And I think uh, HP of uh, hit point loss also does that. I think you kind of like did something different th- lately is when you're starting to gain low on hit points, even though you have, actually you've done it for a while, even though you have one, two or three hit points left, you just sit down like, okay, I, I'm done fighting. Which really annoys them. Which really annoys some people. <laughs> they go, you still have one hit point. And she goes, I'm really tired. <laughs> I don't want to risk going below that one hit point or those two hit points, which you're right. It really annoyed people. Yeah. But it makes sense that somebody would just like, okay, I need to take a break. Even though you're in the middle of combat. I mean, the whole idea of fighting to the death just almost does not make sense if you are care about living, right? So I thought it was pretty cool. And if people played that more that way and then like they would with like the sanity stat, I think – it would, or if there was a stress stat in in D and D, right, or a, well, or a strain, strain, yeah. What I'm saying, it, if people reacted the same way to to, to sanity stat being going down as the physicalness, like of loss of hit points, like let's say you're you're down to ten percent of your hit points of your total, you might want to retreat from combat and say, you know what, I I'm not feeling very well, right? And it's not even a mechanical thing. And let me tell you, when you do that. Depending on on your players, like like Mike would go, oh, she's almost out of hit points, right? He's thinking in his head, right? Yes. Whereas Sip is going, well, what are you doing? <laughs> Get back into it, man. Get back into the fight. We'll, we'll heal you when you're when we're done with the fight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, that's why I think that the idea of the the death saves in fifth edition really is a crutch for players because they continue fighting when they're down to like one hit point or. Or zero, right? What can you fight? No, you can't fight at zero. At zero. You're just doing death saves, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And you're hoping that one of your teammates will get to you to... Hopefully. Hopefully. Bandage to, you up. To bandage you up. That kind of 
it's not a sanity mechanic, but it is a mechanic to to show the death saves, right? That you have a certain amount of time for people to get to you to save you. Right. Yeah, I think that's just another, I think it's another way of keeping the characters alive. I mean, there, there was all kinds of iterations of hit points. Um, in original D&D, if you got to zero, boom, you're dead. I think in AD&D, they got you to negative hit points, right? You, you were If you hit zero hit points, your body would go down. And then after that, you would slowly be bleeding out one hit point per turn so that 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 took a while and then people were going well i'm just gonna some nasty gms would kill you while you're laying there right like oh why would you go after a guy who's dead or dying because you're not completely dead <laughs> uh i never played with a care with dms like that but i've heard of of, <laughs> of those situ- situations i think i think <laughs> I think there was one uh I was I was listening to a podcast and they were playing uh Mech Warrior the the world of Mech Warrior and uh this this one pilot the, the one guy had defeated the 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 player had been defeated and his and his mech was down and his pod was down but the guy the guy who was the player had insulted the other guy's family so much that the the guy was mad now, usually you don't kill a, a downed mech pilot because it's considered uh, unchivalrous, right? Because these guys are giant mech pilots or they consider themselves knights, right? And they, I think they even could have knight themselves and all this other stuff. But out of sh- uh, sheer of vileness and, and nastiness, uh, the guy's his cockpit and the mech is down. On, I'm, I'm leaning over like you guys can see me. But he's on the ground. His legs have been shot off. His arms have been shot off. So it's just a pod. So the other mech comes walking by and he looks down at him and he goes, you insulted my family. And he lifts up his <laughs> mech leg and crushes and kills the, the mech pilot, the RPG player. And the guy goes, Okay, I deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why I talked about that, but I think those kinds of situations, I think, are great role play elements. And I think that's all we're talking about, right? When you're talking about losing sanity, when you're talking about strain, those are things that, as a player, you should play out. And I think I, that's why I like the idea of you sitting down, you getting away from the front line, going, "I need to take a breather," and. And other players reacting, going, get back in the fight. You're not dead yet, right? (laughs) And the idea is, you're not dead yet. Like, Who wants to be dead? Nobody does. So I think that's pretty cool. And I think that's a better way of role-playing games, role-playing a game, than to just let let yourself go down to zero and then pass out and hopefully someone picks you up. Well, another thing is, like, when we were playing Star Wars, I noticed that the people that play with the Force, they have choices, right? Oh, yeah. They can take the bad um, side of the force to do what they want. But later on, it will come back and make them evil or whatever you want to call it, right? They'll, they they might, the they, they might turn to the dark side. Which And the other one... Which is funny because I, I do not have force and destiny, which that's all the that's the rule book for force users and all that stuff. So I don't have that book. And I didn't know that, right? I didn't know how that all that stuff worked. And I really didn't know how force usable this guy that mike was playing mm-hmm. how much he was able to use the force and then he could he's really force. is a jedi yeah, he really is a jedi yeah. he's not like <laughs> i thought he might be some force sensitive emerging person no but he has a lightsaber and the whole deal yeah he did he wrote he he rolled those dice and he didn't get good force points right. but he got dark force points and you can use them but they they go on your permanent record like in school right <laughs> It's going to stay with you for the rest of the game. And if you build too much of those or use them, then, then you can turn. Right. So I thought it was brilliant mechanic. The idea that you want to do something, but the force is just, does you don't, there's no, doing what you're doing does not give you the uh, ability to use the force. But if you turn to the evil side, which is anger and all that, you know, that Yoda says not to do, yes. right? It was it say? It was, uh, I don't know. Anger leads to whatever. Yeah, and so he did it. He he really wanted whatever. I forgot what he was doing. I don't know, but but he, but really, he really wanted, wanted to, to happen. Yeah. To happen, and so he took the dark side points and 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 Ray goes, well, you know, I could use those later. And if you build too much of those, you basically become the dark side. 
I think that the one ring has that kind of idea in it where it's hope versus shadow, right? So yes. you can, you lose your hope. So because you're in a very bad, bad, <laughs> bad situation, but you can take shadow points or to do stuff. You gain shadow you points. You gain shadow points by doing stuff. That, by, by doing bad things. But if your shadow goes too much, then what? Your character's gone forever. You're, yeah. You're lost in the shadow. Yes. I think the reason I wrote these down and I put these down as examples is I think this all stems from this idea of sanity, right? There's There's something more than just the physicalness of your character. And I think... Different role-playing games, uh, more modern role-playing games have taken into account, yes, it's just not about hit points. There's other things that can happen to your character. There's other elements that affect your character's well-being other than their physical well-being. And I think all this stems from this idea of sanity. And I think the more modern, more modern, yeah, kind of, more modern RPGs have have done a better job of explaining what, or why these stats exist. And I think it makes, like I said, I think it makes for better role playing when in star Wars, you suffer strain, mental strain. Well, when you get certain to a certain point, you're mentally, you can't do stuff. You're you're, you're exhausted. Yeah. You you need to take a nap. (laughs) (laughs) I need to say, please same thing with, with alien. If you can go somewhere where you're free from, danger and you know your character knows that there's no possible way of uh, you're out of danger then you're tr- you could actually reduce your stress level when that happens i don't know <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of a place on a ship with an alien that you're out of danger and in the one ring they have the adventuring phase and then they have the the winter phase i guess what they i forget what it was officially called but it's where you basically uh hold up somewhere for the winter because the winters are really bad. and But it does more than just rest. You regain hope by doing projects that help people in your community. Whatever that may be. And I think that's pretty cool. I think, like I said, I think it makes for a better role-playing experience when you add these things to the game. I think Star Wars, FFG, Alien, Tales from the Loop, and The One Ring are just examples of, of people seeing... COC and the sanity going, oh, yeah, okay. We have to take into account the mental aspects of a character and not just the physical. And I think that they work well, and each of one of these iterations is, is really well written and really well done. So there you go. There you go. Good luck on your sanity. <laughs> this is Gaming Perspectives with Saul and Jolene. And you have a good day.